sometimes they use it to remove water or evacuate waste, or to supply certain machines in the factory with air or water or raw materials. For instance, food producers might feed ingredients through a rubber hose into a mixer. This company makes low pressure and medium pressure rubber hoses. The intended use is what determines the rubber composition. Function also determines the color because industrial hoses are often color coded. The rubber arrives at the factory from the supplier in rough strips. The first step is to run it through a mill. The rollers heat the rubber, softening and smoothing it to an even texture. The next machine cuts the rubber in strips to the precise width and thickness required for the size of hose they're going to construct. Workers lubricate a steel mandrel that's the exact size of the hose's bore. As the mandrel spins, they wrap a rubber strip around it, measuring and layering if necessary to build the thickness thereafter. Next, they add one or more reinforcement layers. This strip is made of a high-strength synthetic fabric that's been coated in rubber. It's designed to withstand the pressure to which the hose will be subjected. The last layer of rubber forms the hose's outside covering. After verifying that the final diameter is correct, they wrap the entire hose construction tightly in wet nylon tape. The tape will later shrink and compress all the materials together. This factory also makes hoses with a built-in attachment on the end. They position it on the mandrel, then glue the first layer of rubber to it. Then they reinforce the bond with special textile strips and tightly wound high-strength carbon steel wire. They continue the wire, more loosely, down the body of the hose at a specific angle designed to withstand vacuum pressure. Then they wrap the hose in a soft, stretchy rubber strip that fills the gaps between the wires. Next comes a layer of high-strength rubber-coated fabric. Then finally, the exterior covering, light blue rubber for this model. They pressure wrap again with wet nylon tape. Then, to make the hose more flexible, they create corrugations by wrapping it tightly in rope. What's under the rope compacts, creating a dip. They add another layer of nylon tape to hold the rope in place. When construction is finished, the hoses on their respective mandrels go into an autoclave, a cylindrical chamber into which they feed hot steam at high pressure. This vulcanization process, as it's called, triggers a chemical reaction that cures the rubber, making it elastic. Once the hoses come out and cool, workers remove the shrunk tape. The layers are solidly compressed. They wash the nylon tape, then rewind and reuse it. Now workers begin the process of removing the hose from the mandrel. They tie one end with a rope to create pressure, then gently pump water between the mandrel and rubber. The lubricant they applied earlier has prevented the rubber from sticking to the steel, so the hose separates easily. They simply slide it off the mandrel. Workers will now trim the ends, cut the hose to the length the customer ordered, then coil and package the hose. This factory makes a wide range of industrial rubber hose in different outside diameters, different bore sizes, and varying degrees of flexibility. Some hoses have specialty features, such as heat-resistant fabrics incorporated right into the rubber layers.